all right kind of an add-on to my last video made a couple of mistakes kind of big ones so it's not a very good video so let's see if I can fix it um, what I was trying to explain I mean I kind of got sloppy on the two slit experiment because I wanted to focus on the fact that when results change when you start adding detectors that it's likely the detectors are doing something to the particles and that was the main point there um, so yes okay in the two slit experiment what's taking place is that particles are behaving like a wave they're creating a wave pattern they're not behaving like a wave I mean I think that's perverting the truth all right they're creating a pattern you would expect from waves interacting not particles going through a slit individual particles going through a slit um, and then when you put these detectors on to try to detect what slit the particles go through all of a sudden they start acting like particles again all the all the wave stuff goes away all the dual nature goes away all this fantasy goes away and and so my the focus of the last video was just the fact that obviously what's taking place is when we attempt to look at particles we're going to in interfere with them and I wanted to stress that just because that's most of what quantum math, quantum mechanics, the math is about, is accepting the fact that um, we can't tell exactly where something is. So there'd be a range that we could say, okay, it's probably because of the tests we can do without destroying it, we can say that it's probable that this is the range the particle would actually be in and then we can put it through its course and we can come up with an end result and the same probability will be created and we'll, we'll be able to narrow down an answer and if we do that math enough times the, the answers start we can start drawing conclusions because we have compensated for the errors because we've basically run the math through every possible permutation in the way that they do the math by doing the math in sets with errors and they're called vectors and it's really complex I don't even want to get into that but it's basically a way of filtering the imprecision of the initial variables alright so anyway I only I just ignore that part though because it's more important to get to this this particle crap this particle wave nature so now we're part we're back to like the spring stuff you know when I was talking about the particle has a nature okay now we can call that a wave nature it doesn't matter when something has a frequency and a wavelength it's obviously has some kind of nature all right if you had a basketball and it had something called a frequency or a wavelength well then you'd have to say it has to it has to manifest that some way all right, so obviously you wouldn't just say it's a basketball anymore because that basketball would have to be doing something rather eccentric to display or to manifest that wavelength and frequency. Um, so it's, it's a non-brainer to say obviously that electrons, that these particles from electrons to photons have um, a carrier. There's something they're carrying. There's some sort of aspect or element of their identity that's manifest in some way that we can detect in certain circumstances and even just detecting their wavelength and their frequency is already a concession to that even without the two slit experiment we would still have the conundrum of explaining how this frequency and wavelength is manifest in a particle okay a particle traveling because a particle traveling up and down like this with a wavelength doesn't make a whole lot of sense in terms of its practical effect in the real world as we would observe it or even how the math would figure it out. Um, the spiral thing makes some more sense, okay, that the wavelength and the frequency would be manifest in the spiral as the particle moved through time. Alright, so the spring thing. Um, but anyway, we know it manifests something, all right. And in this two-slit ex two-slit experiment, um, what Pyro is basically saying is that two particles go through both slits, somehow interfere with each other, like if they were a mass of particles in a wave, and then end up at the target as a whole particle again. Okay. Now that's not happening. The particles aren't turning into non-particles turning into wave okay and then the wave goes through the two slits okay and then the wave somehow turns back into a particle at the end to hit the target 
I mean, that's not happening. The energy isn't being converted from a wave back into a particle again, all right? So it's no way it's two particles interfering with each other. If you shot two particles through the slits with detectors on so they would act normally, um, at the same time, uh, they would not end up at the end target looking like a wave because two singular particles cannot behave like a wave. They don't interfere with each other the same way as a wave would interfere with itself. I mean, two, inter two waves would interfere with each other going, impacting a two-slit scenario. Um, so in that sense, it doesn't, still doesn't make any sense. There's not, it's, 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 a, it's a cartoon explanation to say the particle is going through both slits. Because obviously something else has to be happening because it's ending up at the target as a photon. It's not ending up at the target as a mass of energy that got displaced into a wave that was capable of interacting with itself. The way you get the highs and the lows in a wave pattern, the whole thing this thing is about, you know, where the wave goes up and then down, up and down, and that's the pattern we're seeing at the target when it's looking like there's a wave. So there's dead spots, and the dead spots are created because the high peak of a wave meets the low peak of a wave and they cancel each other out. Now, obviously, two particles interacting with each other can't do that, okay? They're either going to annihilate each other or they're going to go their separate ways or they're going to bounce off of each other. But they're not going to do anything. They're not going to end up at the target as one particle. So it just doesn't work, all right? The only, the only, the only explanation is, is that there is some um, aspect uh, to the behavior of each particle where its probabilities dictate that it has certain paths of of um, trajectory if it isn't stripped of its character but if you strip it of its character strip it of its frequency strip it of its um, wavelength then maybe it loses that character so i guess another experiment might be is to try to take one of these particles shoot it through two sl slits and then try to shoot it through another slit or two before you finally get to a target and see if you can keep changing the effect see if you can turn it wave particle wave particle wave particle but whatever the bottom line is is they're really small particles and it the the math and the science is just about approximations and calculations of 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 um what Probability is the wrong word. I mean, it's the only word we have, but it's not about saying the the matter itself is improbable. The point of the math is to say our ability to observe the particle is in, has to depend on probability because we can't predict the actual location, but it doesn't have, the particle itself doesn't jump or from one part to another part or doesn't have an improbability. It has a definite course. We just can't predict the definite course. Uh, so I don't know if this helped. <laughs> this subject gets just, well, whatever. I mean, the, the point is, is that it is not correct to say it is in interfering with itself, okay? Because itself doesn't exist anymore. If it's behaving like a wave, then it is a mass of energy flowing in all kinds of directions at once, all right? That's what a wave is, okay? A wave is, a, is, a, is, is not energy going in one direction with one vector. No, a wave is a mass of energy going in all kinds of directions at once. And so there's no way these particles, unless you convert them into waves and then somehow convert them back into a particle at the target, I mean, there's no way what Pyro is describing is taking place. Um, so it really should be enough. I mean, it's all about how wide these slits are and how far apart they are. And the whole, this whole experiment depends on their closeness and their proximity. And so this whole thing could be nothing more than maybe particles have a gravity around them. And so if we shove a particle through a hole smaller than its gravity, like say if you took the planet Earth and it had to go through a slit that wasn't much bigger than itself, know what you'd end up doing just because of the, the, the gravitational pull? If you threw it through that slit, you'd end up ripping the surface of the Earth off. Okay, because the gravity, the gravitational forces, it would, it would tear at the, at the particle known as Earth. Um, and that might, might be all this is about, okay? This might be about pressures around particles that, have, that we don't understand yet, but has nothing to do with the particles themselves. It has to do with the fact that we have an experiment that's ripping particles to pieces.
or is at least changing the nature of the particle. That's probably a better way to say it. Ripping it to pieces doesn't, no, that doesn't work. Uh, all right, I'm just, I'm, you know, I like this subject, but um, there's just so much bullshit. So, it, and then it's just, it's just a little bit too convoluted to have to go through each step of it and tie it all together. And uh, so hopefully I won't make any further errors though. I did make an error in the last video.